Farming is one of the most vital industries on this planet. Let's be honest, without it, most of us wouldn't be able to survive. But as the available space on the planet gets smaller and smaller, what's the future of farming? Where's it gonna go? Well, today I'm in Clapham in London, not the place you're gonna imagine to find the future of farming, but you could. Not behind this wall, underground. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm one of the co-founders of Growing Underground. Welcome to the farm. So the first thing I want to know from Richard is how does it all work? How do you actually grow anything deep underground? Hydroponics is a method of growing where you uh, put the nutrient in the water and that's carried to the plant through a system like this. The bench actually fills up with water between two to five times a day and that carries the nutrient to the crop uh, and then it naturally ebbs away, goes through a filter system, cleans itself and then comes back round and, and is used again. What they actually sat on here, so you can see here with the peas, we use um, a, a recycled carpet here, which is the substrate, which enables the the, the seed to hold on to something to, to, to grow. You can see that the uh, roots actually grow through the matting and down into a water bath, but it's very, very shallow. And it's not there all the time. The water ebbs and flows. There's something else that you don't get any of down here, 33 meters underground, and that's sunlight. And plants need sunlight in order to photosynthesize, in order to make those precious sugars. Can these LEDs really pack as much punch as sunlight? Plants require between a certain light spectrum, and, and they are, as you can see, getting what they need here. A lot of LEDs are just the blue and red end of the spectrum, which apparently is what the, what the plant requires, just the blues and reds. But we found that the plants require quite a lot of the greens and the oranges and the yellows in the center of the, the light spectrum for flavor and various other elements for the plant. We're growing about 12 varieties of microgreens um, at the present. Um, we have grown a lot more, but we've got our, our range to about 12 products. As the plant grows larger, the flavor disperses. It's very strong, isn't it? So fragrant. Mm. I only had a couple of little little leaves and it was just, oh, it's even better at the end. So you do get a lot more flavor in a smaller amount, which is what the chefs like it's in the sort of the high-end restaurants and food service. Open field farming has been around for ages. It's a well-known, proven method of cultivating the land and getting produce. So what are the benefits of underground farming? We're using a controlled environment, so we can control the temperature, the um, humidity, um, the CO2, and, and so we can recreate any uh, environment for a certain crop that negates seasonality so we can basically grow year round. So that means you're using 70% less water than you'd use in open field farming, you're not reduced to limited periods of, of growth, you can grow all year round. Growing in this environment is actually a very efficient way of growing. Conventional grow growers that would grow this in a greenhouse, um, say in the northern hemisphere, um, nine months of the year you're going to have to pump quite a lot of heat into the greenhouse glass is very inefficient so it lets heat out. Growing in this environment we've got um, 100 foot of soil above us uh, and and the, these LEDs actually give off a bit of uh, heat as well so that brings the temperature up. We felt as we came through the tunnel as we came into the farm it was quite cool but in this area it's very nice and warm so we can play with those temperatures so in the summer we need to put a bit more wind flow through to get that temperature right in the in the winter less because it's a, it's a cooler environment. Yeah, and LEDs aren't massively power drawing either, are they? Like no, they're, they're actually not. super efficient. Yeah, exactly. LEDs as, as an option. And I just felt the tube yeah. go past. And I don't know if you that, heard it or felt it. That was uh, four stories above us here. Really? Yeah. God, you still feel it. Richard had to go and run off to a meeting, so he introduced me to Daniel, who took us actually back a stage before the plants get into the underground farm, to the first point where you take the seeds and you sow the seeds onto that matting. And then those trays with the mats on them are put into the trolley and the trolleys are taken into the propagation tunnel. Now it's normally pitch black in here um, and it essentially tricks the crops into thinking that they're underground and that means that they start the germination process. So this is peas that have been here for two days. This is the peas that have been down here for three days germinating. So tomorrow, on day four, they will then be taken into the light tunnel for seven days. And then the guys take it and they very carefully cut the produce off uh, above the matting layer, above the carpet layer. And then it's weighed and put into packaging labelled up and then it's sent off to the suppliers. And what's fantastic about this place is that it literally travels one mile down the road to New Covent Garden Market 
and then it's sent out to the restaurants and the shops in London and everything is actually sold within the M25. So it's got a really small carbon footprint. This was all about feeding the future and ways that farming could go in the future. What about insects? If you're interested in whether you could, should or would eat them, then check out this film. And what about if it all goes peak tong, if it all goes wrong, then could we actually live without food? Check them out. I'll see you next time. I'm off to get a sarnie.